Hello students, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to discuss about the multiple choice questions based upon the electrochemistry. You just try to answer. Which of the following is an electrolyte? Acetic acid is an electrolyte and the remaining glucose, urea and pyridine are non-electrolytes. What is the standard EMF of Daniel cell? Daniel cell is a good example for galvanic cell and it consists of two electrodes, zinc and copper. The electrode potential of zinc is minus 0 0.76 and that of copper is plus 0 0.34. The electrode having higher reduction potential will act as cathode and the other one will act as anode. So EMF of the cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode. So here in this case EMF of the cell is equal to E copper minus E zinc that means 0 0.34 minus minus of 0 0.76 so it is equal to 1.1 volt so what is the emf of daniel cell it's 1.1 volt which of the following is a weak electrolyte boric acid is the weak electrolyte clear students so, which of the following is the weak electrolyte? Boric acid is the weak electrolyte. In electrochemical series, the electrode with lowest reduction potential value is. So, the metal which occupies top position in the electrochemical series has the lowest reduction potential and that is lithium. So, Lithium is having the lowest reduction potential in electrochemical series through salt bridge. What is the importance of salt bridge? Salt bridge is mainly used to maintain electrical neutrality at the electrodes. So that is possible by the flow of ions. So through salt bridge what happens? Ions will move to maintain electrical neutrality at the electrodes which of the following forms a non-conducting aqueous solution non-conducting aqueous solution means which of the following is a non-electrolyte yes alcohol is the non-electrolyte so it is ethyl alcohol it is the non-electrolyte who explained the loss of electrolysis so, undoubtedly, Faraday explained the loss of electrolysis in the form of Faraday's first law and Faraday's second law. Clear students? Arrhenius theory was modified and applied to strong electrolytes by what is the importance of Arrhenius theory? It explains the electrolysis of weak electrolytes. Thus, it was modified and applied to strong electrolytes by Debay, Huckel and Onsager. So, who modified Arrhenius theory? Debay, Huckel and Onsager. The standard reduction potential of an element is equal to can you guess what is the relation between the standard reduction potential and oxidation potential standard reduction potential is equal to minus oxidation potential so here in this case that is equal to minus 1 into its standard oxidation potential the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte is weak electrolyte dissociates to a lesser extent that means the degree of dissociation of 
a weak electrolyte is very very less and it is less than 3% 1 faraday is equal to it is 96500 coulombs a solution of nickel chloride was electrolyzed using platinum electrodes after electrolysis it is nickel chloride solution so during electrolysis what happens nickel gets deposited at the cathode and the chlorine gas will be liberated at the anode so in this case nickel will be deposited on the cathode okay students a solution of sodium sulfate in water is electrolyzed using inert electrodes the product at cathode and at anode are respectively here it is sodium sulfate in water that means aqueous sodium sulfate solution so whenever aqueous electrolytic solution is electrolyzed if the metal is other than noble metal at cathode what happens hydrogen gas will be liberated and at anode oxygen gas will be liberated so option a is the right answer the electrolysis of an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide between platinum electrodes yields here also it is an aqueous solution and the metal is other than noble metal so at cathode hydrogen gas will be liberated and at anode oxygen gas will be liberated so option b is the right answer the cathode reaction in electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid with platinum electrodes is irrespective of the electrolyte used what is the reaction at the cathode always at the cathode reduction takes place which of the following reaction occurs at anode during the electrolysis of copper sulfate solution using copper electrodes copper electrodes means they are active electrodes so if at all during the electrolysis active electrodes are used then what happens the metal undergoes dissolution at the anode and thus copper undergoes oxidation with the result it results in the formation of cu plus 2 ions during electrolysis the anions and cations of the electrolyte so during electrolysis what happens anions will move to the anode and the cations will move to the cathode at the respect to electrodes they gets discharged so electrically they gets discharged at the electrodes clear students in which of the following electrolysis electrodes act as active electrodes electrolysis of active electrodes means if the electrodes are made other than graphite and platinum they are called as active electrodes and here option c is the right answer the electrolysis of which electrolyte gives the same products in the fused state as well as in the aqueous solution state that means in the molten state and also in the aqueous solution state the products at the cathode and at the anode are same so if the electrolyte is made up of 
a noble metal definitely the products in the molten state and in the aqueous solution are same so in this case option c is the right answer on the basis of position in the electrochemical series the metal which displays hydrogen from the water and acids is from the electrochemical series it is very clear that if the metal is present above hydrogen then it can replace hydrogen from the acids and water so aluminium is the right option Finally, I would like to conclude this video by giving a test question. Identify the common electrolyte used in the salt bridge. Clear? So, which of the following electrolyte is used in the salt bridge? If you like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you.